So one of the highlights of uh, this Congress are the state-of-the-art lectures and I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by two professors giving those uh, talks, Professor Axel uh, Merseberger and uh, Norman Maitland. Welcome both. Thank you very much indeed for taking time to talk to us today. Very much appreciated. Now th th let's, let's start off, we're trying to get a lot of information into a short package, but what is anti-androgen uh, therapy and, and when is it used? So um, the EAU guidelines recommend the use of ADT treatment in metastatic symptomatic prostate cancer. You can also use it in advanced prostate cancer in combination with radiotherapy or in a palliative setting. So it's used in a palliative setting to stop the prostate cancer in growing. How effective is it? So it's very effective in most a type of prostate cancer, there's a subtype of prostate cancer where you probably should initiate early chemo or think of, consider of early chemotherapy as uh, we have discussed uh, the Sweeney data of the charted trial uh, just recently. So, uh, but in most cases it's very effective, it suppresses the testosterone level in those patients and uh, keeps the tumor from progression. Professor Maitland, when does it fail? When does it fail? It almost inevitably fails. That this is part, it's, as Axel has said, it's incredibly effective in shrinking tumors. But after a period of time, depending on the stage of patient, the patient will relapse. And every time they relapse, successive treatments are less effective. So it, it's, it's a scientific challenge as far as I'm concerned, a clinical challenge as far as Axel's concerned. And I think putting the two together, hopefully will make it more effective. From your work, what's the answer then when it fails? What's the next step? What else can one do? I think the real answer is to stop it failing in the first place. Uh, the reasons it fails are probably twofold. First of all, within the cancer mass, the later you treat it in the patient cycle, the more chance there is that there is an intrinsic uh, resistance within the tumor. The other alternative, one which we promoted for quite a few years now, is that there is, there is a cell type within that cancer mass which is destined to be resistant, which we call a cancer stem cell. So whatever you do, you have to try to treat more than one cell type or you have to try to treat more than one um, approach to anti-androgen therapy because there are more than one. There are probably seven or eight different ways you can block this key androgen response pathway. One of the things picking up in your uh, article uh, that strikes a chord is that you, you, you're talking about the need for a personal approach, not one size fits all. Absolutely, yes. So we model cancers. I don't treat patients, but we use material from real patients. And just as in real patients, the models respond differently from every single patient. One of the, the delights of a scientist is if he has a model that he can pull on and it will perform like a marionette for him. When you study real cancers, that's not the case. So we have to think of each individual patient as a target for a personalized therapy, yes. We're talking about treating in individual uh, patients, actually. How, how important is it or, or how uh, useful is it to continue with ADT with other types of treatment, other types of therapy? So far, even though there's a lot of advancement in, in basic research and we as clinicians are looking forward and there's this discussion on splice, splice variants we were just discussing on. Yes. So um, until they are not ready for prime time so far, not validated yet, until then the recommendation is surely to keep on ADT treatment in all metastatic and symptomatic prostate cancer patients, especially when it comes to the development of uh, castration resistant disease. It is the backbone, really the backbone of a treatment of advanced prostate cancer and I would advise all the colleagues to keep on with the ADT and in best case when it fails as you just alluded to, to augment with the novel substances we have and we have promising data coming on Tuesday from the terrain trial uh, showing an activity of enzalutamide in the early setting compared to bicalutamide. So I think you should rather augment than stopping ADT and continue with ADT lifelong in this palliative, situa palliative situation. Okay, reading both of your 
uh, very interesting papers. One of the things that strikes me is you're very, both of you, quick to, to point out what we don't know. You know, there's a lot of things we do know, but there's a lot that, that, that we don't know. What, 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 what's next? What, what, what areas of, of research are you most looking forward to, 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 to fill in some of the pieces here? So a lot of data will develop in the M0 CRPC, or so the early CRPC setting, where there are large phase three trials right now recruiting patients with novel substances like just mentioned enzalutamide, but also another anti-androgen ARN 509, which is under development. We have the galacturones. We have a lot of substances in this indication, early CRPC, M0 CRPC. We have a lot of development in imaging, for, for example, PSMA, PET-CT will develop and get into this indication in order to find metastatic disease at an early stage to uh, augment and to treat later on in this indication. Yes. I, I entirely agree. I think the thing that has revolutionized our thinking is this charted trial. And if you think about it in terms of genetics, the charted trial, which is an early treatment, is, uh, is absolutely logical. It's, it, it's staggering that nobody thought of doing it before. Fortunately, the charted trial is just uh, covering like about 5% of the yes, patient yeah. population since this is uh, initially metastatic prostate cancer patient is rarely seen. Most of the times we have a development of a progression of disease, initially radical prostatectomy or radiation therapy and then further in progression and we catch the patient at an earlier stage. So sure. charted is yeah. 5%. But I'm personally looking for, for biomarkers mm -hmm. to, to stratify for treatment. That would be, would be excellent to have. Well, great. Well, thank you both very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us. I hope the lectures go well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.